Hello everybody, welcome to the Nerdy Four Podcast. I'm your host for today's episode, Alex, from Movie Sales. With the recent news of Ben Affleck not directing the Batman movie, and with the critical success that the Lego Batman's having, a lot of fans are wondering, how do you create the perfect Batman movie? And I know movies quite well, and I, I have a channel dedicated to how much we love, but... And I know a bit of Batman, like, I know a dash of it. But in what what I truly need is a Batman expert, a battle file. Man, doesn't that sound like someone has sex with bats? Anyway, I'm in my room. It's dark. Wait, what could that be coming out from the darkness? Oh no, it's uh, one of my other co-hosts, Curtis. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I kid. I kid. I'm, I'm, I'm a batophile? That's a bit weird. No, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I'm well, a bataholic, I rather call oh, it. Oh, bataholic. Yeah, you know, just got too much, I can't get enough of it. But yeah. <laughs> so uh, today we're being nerdy for... Uh, the perfect Batman movie. The perfect what Batman movie, it? yeah. So my expertise in the Batman <laughs> series and everything. And me learning how to try and create the perfect movie and we're going to... Fuse together like Goku and Vegeta and create the perfect pitch. What, what would that be? That'd be uh, Clal- Clalix? Or... Clalix, Clalix. Or uh, Alice. Al- Wait, no, Alice. Al- Alertis? I don't know. Uh, so, what think uh, we, 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 yeah, we could go Super <laughs> Saiyan or whatever. I know Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Alex, what are we going to talk about first there? I, okay. You may not know, recently Ben Affleck's uh, not directing the Batman. No. I know, it's a shame. But the the runner up for it was, was Matt Reeves, who directed Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, yeah. And he's currently doing post production on War of the Planet of the Apes, which will be coming out in July. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. And what um, um, one of my personal favourites is Cloverfield, which was in 2008. And it was the Dawn of the Internet uh, trailer, and people going, What is this? It's like something's attacking. And the way the trailer was shot. It was just handy cam footage, like what, mm. like sort of the mockumentary type stuff. And yeah. You think it's real, and you're like, oh god. Yeah, the, um, the way they filmed that movie and the, the other movies that he's pr- currently doing is really good. good. So yeah, I can say yeah, it's in good hands for yeah. um, creating this movie. Yeah, but uh, in the last couple of days, it's been announced that he's been currently discussing with Warner Brothers, the people who make the Batman movies, that. He, uh, they want him to start very quickly, but mm-hmm. he's currently doing post-production on war. Uh, he's probably spent a year and a half or two years doing. So, unfortunately, he's dropped out, saying he can't do it due to scheduling conflicts. Yeah, well, um, yeah. being someone like that, and you're already doing one project, he, yeah. he doesn't want to get too confused doing it's like many you're projects. It's like you're doing a marathon, yeah. and you've got like, the last mile to go. It's like, and then someone else says, hey, do you want to do a marathon right now? And right now, go, yeah, yeah. You fancy just continuing another uh, couple of miles, you know? No, I don't. No, no. So it's understandable why he rejected yeah. the um, position of having that. It's understandable. Yeah. So I, I am sad that Ben Affleck won't be doing it himself because I thought he did an absolutely amazing job with uh, the, yeah. previous, the last one he did. And yeah. Well, we'll just have to see what yeah. conjures up from this. So I would say... Um, Due to the fact we're talking about directors and the different ways of making movies. Yeah. I see there's been, for the last 30 year old years, there's different ways of Batman movies happening. Mm. Okay, on one hand, you got the the, uh, the Batman movies where Mr. Freeze has broken into the museum, <laughs> the dark, uh, Bane has done another terrorist attack, and then Batman's come to try and save the day and try and solve the situation. But on the other hand, the more interesting hand, you got this idea of crimes happening in mysterious ways. Mm. And basically, Batman, with uh, talking with uh, Harvey, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and just, uh, yeah. Who's the police guy again? Go- Gordon! Gordon. Who's the, pl- who's the police guy again? The guy that always calls him, the only guy that has, like, trustful police force and has the bad signal. <laughs> Who is that guy? Harvey? Oh, God. See? This is why I got you in. Cause yeah. I, I, yeah. But yeah, Gordon, yeah. Yes. And basically, Gordon calls him up and trusts, like, oh, there's something happening. Can you come help? Mm. And it's more on the idea of the mystery element 
And even though I do prefer Superman over Batman, the one thing I loved about Batman is his investigating skills. He is a detective, first of all. Yeah. He is the world's finest detective. Yes. And those are the movies I'm more interested in, I would argue. Um, Batman Begins happen, uh, is that, with the idea of Scarecrow getting Mafia members into Arkham and there's something going around with the water plant. Yeah. And something's happening. And also, my all-time favourite Batman movie, which is an animated one, The Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah. It's like, bad stuff's happening and everyone thinks it's a ghost. <laughs> and Batman, a true realism, it's like, oh, it can't be a ghost, and tries trying to work out who it is. <laughs> so, my question to you, on the two different ways of doing Batman movies, what do you think makes the perfect Batman movie? Yeah. Is it Batman solving, uh, de- uh, working out who a mystery, or is it Batman stopping a terrorist attack or so? Um, it's pretty hard to uh, correspond to where you want to go because there's been so many movies, anime yeah. movies and things that now, which I adore anyone's adaptation of what they want to go for. Yeah. I'm not much of a critic when it comes to my favourite uh, of course. Batman family, but... I would say that a lot of the time you want to see the detective type skills yeah. going on. You, it is nice to see all these big battles. Oh, yeah. the whole town is under chaos. You have to go solve it. And yeah. When I can go to two different comics, I would say, just to yeah. say it from Aerosol. The first one I can say is the Court of Owls, which is the New 52 Court of Owls. Yeah. For the sheer fact of all the owls were under... Batman's nose for centuries and he had no idea about it so he had to look up so much things about the family about figuring out where they actually have their hideouts what's actually going on who are these people it was such a mystery because it's like but they've been under your nose the whole time does that mean Batman have a very big nose yeah (laughs) (laughs) but they go under the fact of like the bats and owls figure and things like that where um uh, owls tend to hide in bat stens and things like that so it was such a big thing for Batman to try and correspond to going well they've been here the whole time and I've never noticed so it goes into oh now I have to investigate try and find out who they are what's yeah. going on and it took two massive big comics um, yeah. two big uh, paperback ones and then it went on to the whole other Batman family you've been involved yeah. with the Court of Owls as well and the yeah. Talons which yeah. is the assassins for yeah. the Court of Owls, which go off and kill people. Yeah. So it was a big arc, which has yeah. so much detective skills and that. And then I move on to another comic, which will be um, Year One, where it's got uh, Enigma, which uh, you have the Riddler when he was... Yeah. Um, first of all, he decided to be called Enigma before Riddler. Well, I didn't know about uh, Enigma being called... It was his like first supervillain name before he became the Riddler. Yeah, he had um, Enigma, which was a good name, and... Um, I think Gotham he does like using the name yeah. Nygma because that's his yes. last name. Uh, which I just want to think about the idea of the Court of Owls is now a major inspiration for like the current season of mm. uh, Gotham, which it just shows how important that book, series of books are. Yeah, so um, going to the year what um, zero year yeah. zero series um, where uh, Enigma has taken over Gotham. Yeah. And it's overgrown with uh, greenery and that, and they're trying to survive. Poison Ivy must be happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're trying to survive, and the Riddlers, you have to answer Riddler's uh, riddle, or you get sent into a pit of death thing. Wow. This is a dramatic um, issue where Batman's becoming himself, so he had to use what he can. He's yeah. a very um, roughed up version, so he's yeah. got like a backpack, his arms is out, and yeah. he's just got a tank top on. Yeah. This is Batman in his early days again. Yeah, because I swear there is a cover which I may use for our YouTube thing whilst you're currently watching. Yeah. Is the idea of um like volume five, there's a picture of him on top of like a skyscraper with the backpack. Yeah. Yeah, and so yes. Yeah, uh, this is where he is there where yet again he's uh young, he's uh been yeah. used to surviving on himself and being exactly. a survivalist like a commander and that. Yeah. So um this is a series of you can clearly see the problem. Yeah. You can see Nygma's taken over and Batman has to fight him against all his riddles. Yeah. So you've got the two concepts. Something big's just happened. He, the whole town's screwed yeah. and he has to solve it. Yeah. Or Court of Owls. He had no idea where it came yeah. from and he has to try and solve who they are, what they are, and sure. try and find out the family ties of how long they've been actually going for, which 
These are, yet again, what you said, the two concepts of... Exactly. So, uh, and as a Batman fan, you've, uh, you chose the hybrid of the both of them and just yeah. working out the idea. Because um, for me, my personal favourite Batman comic is The Long Halloween. Yeah. Because uh, I love the idea of mystery. I'm 100% fanboy for the mystery elements of it. Plus, you see just the ca- uh, the, the whole concept of um, the whole gallery, uh, the rogues gallery of Batman villains. Yeah. And it's just the idea of just these murders happening on the different holidays, which I love the idea of like Christmas, New Year's, and all that. And it's just the idea of Batman uh, trying to work out who's done it. And I love the idea near the end, which I won't spoil. Mm. It's a villain who you do not want to expect. Yeah, Spoilers, definitely. it's not the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> which is not the Joker. Thing. Yeah. Well, they use a lot of smiles. I wonder who this could be. Yeah, who is <laughs> Why it? is everything frozen? God damn it, poison ivy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you get a good concept where yeah. you get the two genres, but I, if I had to go for yeah. our ideal movie yeah. of it, I would have to go towards the more mystery because... Yeah. It ha- they have to think a lot more into the ties, into yeah. the why is this this way, instead of, yeah, Bane's just took it over the town with tanks, go defeat him, you know? Exactly. Because that's more like, oh, well, I'll just show how much tech I got and how much firepower I got, instead of Batman solving mysteries, showing that yeah. how he is a detective, as well as using his gadgets to do it, which, to be honest, talking about um, investigating and that, you, you takes it back to the Arkham games. Yes. Where you got Iker Asylum, Arkham City, uh, yeah. the other one after that, it was just... Uh, uh, Arkham Origins. Origins as well. Yeah. Was, Which, they all use detective skills to find exactly. out how to... It's like, oh, pinpoint, oh, who's the sniper? And, yeah. yeah. So you look around and you can see people, you can plan out your attack and yeah. you get more detective with solving mysteries. Like, oh, yeah. we need to go in detective mode to scan what's happened. Yeah. Like, um... You, talking about Telltale games, you exactly. use the detective skills a lot in it. Exactly, and the combat, it's the the swing of it's like it's seventy five percent is how you talk to people, how you talk to Selena Kyle, yeah, Harvey Dent, of course the police commission, right, Harvey Dent, <laughs> yeah, <So> yeah, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> but yeah, even in the Telltale games, it, they yeah. take this concept on just a little bit more, which is good. Yeah, where you go. Someone's been shot here. Here's the corpse. Here's the blood marks. Yeah. But where did it come from? So you have to investigate of what shooting angle. Yeah. Try and figure out who was there. Yeah. You go, everyone's dead, but this person got killed this way. But no one here has the weapons or bullets to do that. Yeah. Then you find out someone assassinated to start off. So yeah. it's really good because you use the detective skills. And that is what I'd rather have in a movie yeah. is detective instead of yeah. uh, freezes. Uh, Took it over to town. He wants the diamonds for some weird reason. He wants which, the diamonds yeah. for some reason. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, to... He likes his jewelry, doesn't he? Yeah. Talking about Mr. Freeze, the one thing, uh, like Universal, even though I prefer Superman over Batman, the one thing that's in DC is that what's uh, what character has the best villains or the whole collection, and that is Batman's. Mm. And I pose this to you. Because with the recent confirmation that in the Batman 2018, whoever's directing it, we've got Joe Manganiello, it's confirmed to be Deathstroke, and you yeah. just referenced Arkham Origins, and there is a great fight sequence all, uh, in the opening trailer of them just going at and it's a very tactical yeah, fight. Yeah, the CGI one where yeah. it's got him t- um, going against Deathstroke, and then you get... Um, Deadshot coming, Deadshot here, coming as yeah. well, because yeah. this is where it involves a lot of the uh, assassins trying to exactly. get out of Batman, which... Yeah. yeah, it's a really good, yeah, a really good sequence. I do like it. Yeah, and I even I know. And the big question, the big J question is, is it good to have a Batman movie without the Joker or with the Joker? Because a lot of people's problems with Suicide Squad that even if people didn't like uh, Jared Leto's Joker. Mm-hmm. The one, the bigger concern is that there was enough of him. That jo- the Joker is such an interesting character, and yes, he is. That if you can't do him in like half, half dashes, mm. you've got to do a Joker story, yeah, or not at all. Mm. And that's the ideal. What it's been confirmed from the 2018 uh, film that it's supposedly feature a bunch of different casts uh, of like villains. There's mm. rumored that Talia Ghul. We've got Deathstroke and probably Jared Leto's Joker. 
And the problem is, w to make the perfect Batman, is it uh, make the perfect Batman movie? Do you need to include the Joker, or is it better to have one single villain, a cast of villains? What would you think? Um, going back to the original old movies where um, yeah. pointy nipples came into play. Oh yeah, bat nipples. <laughs> bat nipples. <laughs> um, you mean the bat card? The master yeah, card. Yeah, the, the bat master card <laughs> with Batman and Robin. Ah. Uh. It was good because it showed the villain's reaction to each other. Yeah. I, if it was just one villain, it has to be such a big villain to make a movie all about that person. Uh, uh, which can the Dark Knight Joker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dark Knight Joker, which is kind of a little like, dash of Harvey Dent. Yeah. Uh, Police commission has two face. So I think in uh, like the joy of Batman movies, using multiple villains in it, I think is a good idea. Like the Suicide Squad, where you had. Um, the Joker in that one. I love the Suicide Squad. Yeah. The cast was brilliant. I yeah. think Jared Leto's Joker was actually a really good one. It, and different. Yeah. Which are like some people, and I bet you any money if you tried to copy Heath Ledger's Joker, you'd get criticised yeah. no matter what way you're doing it. Uh, even before they announced the movie, even before the movie was being made and he, the actors were selected, people were judging it anyway. Yeah. It was the same thing about Heath Ledger. I'll, I'll bring you up to that point a little bit. Just like, but Keith Ledger being the Joker as well, like everyone judged him. Oh, before. the gay yeah. cowboy being yeah. the Joker. Everyone judged him way before now because he magically uh, not with us. So yeah. like a major disappointment there because I thought he's a great actor. Yeah. Because he's not with us anymore, a lot of people say, "Oh yeah, yeah, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. Of yeah, course, the best." Oh, I think that's called bandwagoning. Yeah. Jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah. So the thing is, yeah, he was a good Joker, but every single version of characters yeah. I see I don't try and uh, match them Com Which is I don't compare exactly because yet again this Joker is not only just oh Jerry Leto is the Joker no. oh he played the Joker that's it this type of Joker you have to look into a lot of backstory yeah. and it makes you need to find out more about them exactly. like the Suicide Squad you saw all these villains now you need to find out who they are or where exactly. they came from you know Jared Leto his teeth Yes, because yes. we're in the flashback where we see him with White when he's talking to Harley Quinn or yep. Doctor uh, when she's a psychiatrist, mm. and then we see him with uh, a, a fake grill and yeah. damaged on this. Thing. Yes, and that's leaning towards a fan theory that with the they're going to do the Red Hood arc, and it's the idea of the Joker killing Robin because in Batman versus Superman we see him in the Batcave. Yeah. The Joker's description on the Robin costume. Yeah, which the Robin uh, costume is um, Jason it, Todd because yes. of he's the only uh, Robin sidekick which got killed. Exactly, and it's the idea of one of the titles is a Robin with a cross through it. Yeah, and so there's a hint we might see in the Batman movie about the idea of just uh, the Batman going berserk and just breaking all mm. the Joker's teeth, and then <clears throat> and then Joker laughing, saying, oh, "I'm so mm. damaged," and that's why he's got the tattoo. Yeah, example. that's why he's got the tattoo, and that's why he's got the golden teeth because it's also the theory of whenever he laughs, he put his hand in front of him. Yes, because he doesn't like he can't really laugh with gold teeth, yeah. so he uses the tattoo on the back of his hand. Which is a great. This uh, is good yeah. because it makes people want to find out why this character is made yes. this way, which the cat the. Congratulations to the character creation and yeah. the people before who had to come up with a theory of why the Joker looked like this. Exactly. I, big, big um, props. Big props to those people. So with this, with the movie going back on topic now. Yeah. Where oh you gotta have villains. Yeah. I wouldn't mind who. Yeah. If they did such a great story with them that want to make you find out more about them, yeah, that'd be brilliant. Yeah. But there is a load of cash. You got. You haven't seen Mr. Freeze. When's the last time you saw Mr. Freeze? When's the last time you saw Riddler? Exactly. Two Face. Yeah, we recently saw him, but yeah. that was when he's being turned and he's slowly becoming yeah. this person. And it's like because it's the new. I would say it's the new genre of yeah. Batman now. Is we're fresh new Batman series. We've yeah, gone exactly. past the uh, Batman Begins, yeah. Dark Knight, and the now. Dark Knight trilogy and all that. So we went past that now. So now we're on Batman vs Superman. Yeah. Where. Yeah, again, I think that Batman's really good. Yeah, I 100% agree. I agree with the uh, voice mechanism. Because one of the biggest criticisms of the Batman, when you're creating the character, and like the suit mm. is a big part of it, and the idea of the voice. 
and there's a criticism of Marvel's Daredevil and Christian Bale's Batman. Mm. Is when they talk, they go, "Where is she? Yeah. Where is she?" Just decides to. I'm gonna put on a voice. Yeah. Ah. Uh, where? Oh yeah. I hate you. Uh, and then I'm goes not Bruce Wayne. I'm not <laughs> Bruce Wayne. No. Uh, no. Uh, no. I'm not Bruce Wayne. Yes. 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 So. I like the f- sheer fact that Batman for Superman they use a voice synthesizer it to change the perfectly. voice. So it works, yeah. Mm. It's not his correct voice as someone else. His um, voice has changed, which yeah. is good. So I would like to see that come back in this um, latest movie, but film wise, I don't know. There's so many. I'd like to see them try and do the Court of Owls. That'd be good. Yes. But then, yeah, again, we talked about just before yeah. um, when creating a Batman movie, a lot of people want to see comic version in yeah. filmography, which um, it's pretty hard to do. I would say comics keep it to animation because they yeah. can go so close to it, which there are so many animated Big movies. movies. It's brilliant. Batman, Son of Batman, Batman, Batman of Superman. Yeah. The recent one, which is Justice League Dark. Yes. Which I watched and... Yeah very good because yes. it's funny because it goes on to you said the previous movie you've seen animated yes. which he doesn't believe in ghosts yes so it must be some sort of uh, person behind it yeah. where this one is just like yeah there's ghosts demons. there's <laughs> demons ghosts uh, I need to go to the correct people Constantine and that yeah. which is good because but yeah if it's keeping to villains even in Suicide Squad they did their annotation of all these villains yeah. from what I used to be to what they thought they should look. Yeah. I think they did a good job, so any villain I would like, you know. Yeah. That's what what villain would you like to see in the movie if you uh the yeah. new Batman movie? What would you think would be a good villain? I like the idea of Deathstroke because I would argue yes. In terms of if I would say Batman's arsenal, yeah, as, uh, the sort of anti-Batman sort of thing, the not close. I'm not talking like the direct opposite of Batman, the Joker. Yeah, but like sort of like the evil version. I could argue Deathstroke is in yeah. their way of just him being a master assassin mm. and the way he like strat- being a strategist and like the way just uh, uh, it's hand to hand combat and it's the idea of. I loved and um, what I wish there was more in, in Batman vs Superman, which what I liked about the Dark Knight, uh, Dark Knight Returns, yeah. is the idea of Batman doing a Home Alone thing and setting up all these traps and plans. And I, I like the idea of strategy versus strategy because that's what I think would be making the most interesting movie. Is that the idea of like Batman has a plan to set foot to like try and stop him, and then Deathstroke outmaneuvers him yeah. in that way. And I think that could be quite interesting. Yeah, that'd be a pretty good way of going for it. With multiple villains, <laughs> the biggest concern I have is in most stories, and what my personal criticism with Batman vs Superman is the backstory to some degree of more of the classic things. Like with Batman, go, yes, I know the idea of like his parents were killed, dropped yeah. in the well. Yeah. And for example, even going to Marvel, Spider Man, yes, his uh, like Uncle Ben. Uh, <laughs> and it's the idea of but I can see it being unlikely because at the end of the day a movie has got to connect to the comic book fans yeah. and also the general audience mm-hmm. and so that's why I always think the simple uh, ideas are better and so the idea of why I think Deathstroke could work oh he's just an assassin that's all you really need yes yeah. it could be great about his father selling him and that would be great for all the comic book fans going, oh, they're actually doing it. Yeah. But I think a general audience, like my dad, for example, would be like, oh, who cares? Let's just get to the yeah. meat of it. And <laughs> it's just the idea. But with multiple villains, I'll be okay with it as long as they don't spend spend as little time going, okay, Joker, Bane, Rachel Gould, you're here. Yeah. Just eh. not like, oh, I'm going to spend 20 minutes explaining all of it. Yeah. And then it just feeling the movie longer instead of people going, oh, they're just the bad guys. They're trying to stop the world. Mm. And I think simple, as uh, simple list, uh, yeah, like Chekhov's razor. Like the simple answer is usually the most. Yeah. Is the best way you can do villains, because again, no matter whilst we have talked about Jared Leto's Joker. Yeah. 
I'm okay with backstory if it connects to more of the global story. Mm. But I would argue in a lot of um, like the Dark Knight trilogy, yeah, especially with Rachel Gould in the third one, yes, as in the idea of just spending a bit too much time and just trying to connect, even though like, mm. oh, uh, I have a set. No, you don't. You only have doors. Yeah, and it's the idea of spending a bit too much time with it. I think the simple is like mm. you got the villains, and so yeah, backstory. Keep it simple, keep it kind, cause and make the movie more tight. Yeah, I would say that's more towards like Suicide Squad. Exactly. They, they wrapped up real quickly, even though it involved Batman in a small snippet. It exactly. wrapped up real quickly of how they got to prison or exactly. how things happened. That's one. My, I would argue for me, my favorite part of the Suicide Squad was assembling the team. Yeah. And, and it just, just getting... it took just no time at all. Exactly. And then we could get into the fun of it. Exactly. This movie, if it's the new Batman trilogy or what they're gonna go for, I wouldn't want to see too much of his backstory because we already know we've already yeah. seen this before. It's yeah. the same story. Yeah. To make it even better, Batman movie is just to go. Here's a quick snippet. Yeah, that's it. He knows what happened. We know what happened. Everyone knows what happened. His parents died, so he continued it. Exactly. So let's get straight on to the action. <laughs> I just got a list of a couple of the yeah. main villains that you see, where you got Bane, Black Mask, Calendar Man. You de- yes. you have never seen that much of Calendar Man, which he was a good one. <laughs> but trying to, I see. Imagine trying to sell that to someone who don't, hasn't read any comics yeah. in his life. <laughs> you got Catwoman, which the last time we seen Catwoman was uh, Anne Hathaway's performance in Dark Knight Rises, yes. which was again seeing more of a beginning to Catwoman than mm. the actual. She's been also there. we got Clayface, which yes. we haven't actually seen him yet. No, it's only been the inanimate stuff because it's it's gonna be kind. No, correction. In Gotham season two or three. Oh yeah. Yes, we yeah. have seen Clayface, but yeah. we haven't seen the idea of mimicking. No. And I would argue Clayface is quite hard to do. Yeah. Out of all of them. Clue Master, Deadshot, Deathstroke, Firefly, which is the guy with that flies around with fire fire yeah. uh, things. Got Hugo Strange, which we haven't seen too much of him because no, he's, he's in charge of Gotham. Yeah. yeah. Hush. Imagine that. Hush. Imagine and, uh, that. And, you, and for my dream casting for Hush, I want Matt Damon. Yes. <laughs> because no matter what, because yeah, to do the Hush thing and just doing it as child, to have people grow up together whose main success was creating a film in their early 20s that won the Oscar for Good Will Hunting, I would argue their natural chemistry of being friends, I think, could do quite well. Yeah, I would actually love to have Hush in it because... Yeah, again, if you read too much into the comics, he's yeah. such a adversary to Batman. Batman, so it'd be good to see it. Um, yeah. Fewer people's like Mad Hat, or you haven't seen too much of Mad Hat. No. Man Bat, Mr. Freeze, Penguin. Yeah. Penguin we haven't seen too much of. No, because the Lady. last cinematic one was Danny DeVito, uh, when it comes to like that sort of disgusting man with Penguin. Solomon Grundy. Ooh, Imagine that. Cool. Yeah, Solomon Grundy. Because it would be such dark and everything he touches dies, Fury. Yeah. Uh, and you know who I would cast for that? I wouldn't make Solomon Grundy too big. You know who I would try and cast for that? A wrestler. What was that? Uh, 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 I don't know which wrestler, but because they usually are quite tall, like six sex. Yeah. And put like a few inch of heels. And I'd rather have a Solomon Grundy that's just slightly bigger because if they want to try and do overly mm. big... I, w- I can see that problem with casting in general. Yeah, but you've got... Um, yeah, again, I love the fact that a lot of wrestlers are coming into a lot yeah. of film movies now and doing a great job. Yeah. Just a quick shout to uh, Triple H in uh, Blade series. Exactly. You've got... Uh, Talking about DC, we've got, got The Rock as the Black Rock. Adam. Yeah, which that was... I and John it. Cena for Shazam. I'm just saying it now. I think that would be the perfect double Yeah, I, I think that would be brilliant. But you also got uh, Guardians of the Galaxy where you got... Uh, Batista, Batista for Drax. So we, we've seen it before where yeah. if you need a big character, wrestlers are a good choice. Yes, I think that I think that would probably be the best way you can do Solomon Grundy. Because, mm. again, if they're going to try and put like a CG thing and make him like 15 feet tall, mm. <laughs> doomsday, uh, <laughs> it... Uh, Especially for the Batman thing, I think if they can just do like Drax, have a wrestler and make mm. him like sort of grey and blue, I think, I think that could work. I swear Triple H at the moment, I'm not sure I don't watch wrestling nowadays, I think he's no. got a shaved head and that, and I think he would yeah. actually be pretty good. Yeah. Because he's bloody tall. Exactly, and that's 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 how I would do someone running. Clayface is kind of hard to do without doing CG stuff, but I think for a bit like apply the Drax makeup, make it like grey mm. and blue onto a wrestler's body yeah I think that's probably the best way you can do Solomon Grundy 
Yeah, because then it'll be like, it'll look back at him. Because I'll just show a quick image of... Uh, yeah, which I'll put on the screen for us now. Yeah, which is an image of uh, Triple H, what he looks like at the moment. Yeah. And to be honest, you could just imagine, he looks yes. like Solomon Grandi. Exactly, he just puts on like those just chains around his Yeah, hair. changes his skin, and it's just his face yeah. as well, it just looks so like... Yeah. I think he would imagine make Imagine a... The Undertaker as Solomon Grandi. Ooh. Ooh. Even though he's quite old, but it kind of could work with him being that. And when it comes to villains, that's part one. Now, with every movie, there's usually a romantic interest. <laughs> and basically, I would argue, even though I don't know that much about Batman lore, mm-hmm. the main three romantic interests for Batman yep. is Catwoman, yep. Talia al Ghul, yes. the Dollar Rachel Ghul, and also Wonder Woman. Yeah. So I pose the question, if we are creating the perfect Batman movie, mm-hmm. and there being a romantic interest in it, mm-hmm. do we need one? If so, who should it be? What's your thoughts? Um... Well, Batman... Was it Batman Begins where he had... Uh, uh, Rachel. Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the one with... Uh, Bane. That was number... Uh, that, uh, that's that's the, the Dark Knight Rises with yeah. Talia. Cool. Talia. Cause, yeah. So we've already had Talia, Talia, which she's been so secretive. And I'm not sure, because that seemed like it wasn't that great of a backstory for her. And that, no, so. and plus they spent a bit too much time with Anne Hathaway. It's like you're mm. doing two of Batman's main... Way. And he ends up with uh, Catwoman, even mm. though they did have some better chemistry. So yeah. Again, Talia was done half assed personally. Yeah. So out of the three, I would have to say Wonder Woman wouldn't be a great idea because she's no. such a iconic, strong individual. Yes. And I cannot see them both getting closer, even if people's like, oh, well, they seem pretty close to Batman versus Superman. I would not. Uh, yeah. And, the, and I pose a question. We, we both watched the Justice League trailer. Mm. And it is Batman and Wonder Woman teaming up to try and create the League. Yeah. So do you, do you see Wonder, uh, Warner, uh, Warner Brothers trying to set up a Batman thing? Because Superman's currently with Lois and with mm. them engaged. They're doing that arc. Could you see I, I really... I hope not. I hope not, because then it be such a bad taste in the mouth because yeah. they are colleagues they yeah. bring a team together exactly. not any emotional or yeah. any attraction to each other because no. Wonder Woman is such a strong individual the she, general type thing I would the argue. only thing we really see with her relationships in the animated movie where she, her, and Bat, uh, her and Superman get together yeah. f- for a little bit yeah. but yeah again I just really don't agree with that and moving on to uh, we have uh, Talia yeah. and um, Selena, yeah. Kyle. I would like to see. Um, I can imagine in my head in this movie. I love to have moments where Batman stood there. Then Catwoman comes up, says hello, and they they'll just talk to each other like normal. And because they, they already got history, I don't want to see a movie where it's like, oh, this is the first time seeing each other. I like to see Catwoman comes up, they look at each other and go, oh yeah, we've already have history together. Uh, not sure where we're going to take this, where Selina wants to have the mystery of not knowing each other yeah. and just have the mystery of, oh, yeah, we we always wear a mask when yeah. they're with each other. They don't want to take it off to reveal who each other is. Kinks, but yeah. <laughs> and then Talia is the love interest where makes Damien. Yes, which and is, I was going to bring up a point. We're doing the Batman story and there being a reference to Talia. We currently have an old Batman. We currently have an older Batman, and basically, um, that means I would argue for Catwoman or any Wonder Woman, I would I would want a similar age because ba- Ben Affleck's currently in his mid forties. Yeah. And for Catwoman, I want roughly the same age. Yeah. Let's pause for a sec. And uh, we're gonna take this small interval to have uh, snacks and uh, little things. So, uh, how's it going? You guys all right? Come on, often. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? I can see in your eyes. Hey, buddy. <laughs> and I can seem to have uh, injured himself. That's what happens when you uh, fly back from Metropolis. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you were talking about the idea, or I was talking about the idea, if we're going to have a love in- love interest, 
he needs to be around Ben Affleck's age. Mm. I would say that's understandable. So, because the if we continue from the Batman for Superman, <coughs> we have a very um, experienced Batman. It's yeah. not his young days. It's very experienced. He's Mature. had. He's met. He, Robin's died. Yeah. Uh, Jason Todd's um, killed Robin. Yeah. So that one's dead. Um, Nightwing is most likely around at this time and yeah. age. So it'd be good to see Batman's there and then Catwoman uh, mm. comes up and they have history together. Exactly. But then Talia as well, um, this is roughly the stage where she would be having a child with. Exactly. Could you see in the Batman movie that they're, they're currently right that one of the dynamic friends, we see a young Damien mm. and that might lead into the Batman 2 or whatever. Yeah. I can imagine Selina and uh, Bruce will be Oh yeah, we like each other, but we can't do it. We're yeah. we're two different, different sides, and then it continues with Talia, because yeah. um, he doesn't really like Talia because if he falls in love with Talia, he has to take the role of Rajal Ghul. Yes, but that's not what he wants. No. He only had a little fling with her, and it, it added up of her having a child, Damien. And I remember in a very old comic that uh, <laughs> Talia rapes Batman by giving him some unconscious drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, comics for kids, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so that, yeah. Then Damien was born. The recent uh, Robin in the comics where we have uh, all the Robins, if you know who they are. So yeah. it's hard to say, really. I would say I would like to like like to see Selena, but that's more of an Earth yeah. two thing. Yeah. Earth two three thing with uh, them two getting together, have a kid Huntress. Yeah. So I would like to keep it on the Talia. Yeah, that could be which they have history together. Maybe yeah. it he's just got history with these people, and it doesn't show too much of they're falling in love. Yeah. It's more like, oh yeah, they you know they had history. You know they've had history. They just hint it. You know. Yeah, exactly. And it's going back to for how I would make the perfect Batman. It's the same with the villain backstories. Same with the romantic interest backstories. Mm. Like if there is a Talia girl that one night away in Paris or whenever they mm. conceive Damien and like have a little reference. So, me and you in the same book. He said it. He said yeah. it. He referenced it. <laughs> and such. So it is good because you can reference it. And yeah. we've seen in Suicide Squad, yeah, again, uh, even a small clip of going back reference so much big. Like, exactly. Um, Harley Quinn getting pulled out of the car, yeah. uh, which involved the Joker, and then yeah. running away. You have also the dead shot being stopped because her daughter said not to attack exactly so little things can mean so much in the movie franchise so yeah. i would like to see catwoman come up and say oh yeah we got history like sorry yeah. we have to keep it that way and she goes away and you go oh yeah that so we know whereabouts we are with them instead of oh who is this catwoman oh i fall in love with this catwoman you know it's just yeah and spend like 20 minutes of like they like at the beginning of the movie perhaps like because they usually do a little stinger like there's a museum robbery is taking place because mm. Batman's sure like uh, there's a lot of museums in that universe. <sighs> I don't know why I said that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like Batman stops Catwoman mm. and then to basically go, who are you? Who are you? And have this sort of fl sexual flirting. Yeah. And then back in the thing, Alfred go, oh that lady stopped you. You don't. You rarely get stopped before. It's like shut up, Alfred. Yeah. And he Alfred. goes to back conference like using NSA stuff and just hacking into her, her emails mm. and such. It'd be good just to have. So this is a good opportunity because the Batman we seen for Batman vs Superman has history. Yeah. Just do history things. Don't yeah, exactly. keep any love interest throughout the whole movie. Yeah. Just have maybe they'll get maybe Catwoman is tied up by Two Face and she's exactly. about to be killed. Reference in the Arkham games, games and, yeah. and hope maybe she's about to get took like killed because she stole something off on the other villains, mm -hmm. which will have the corresponding villains attacking each other because. Yeah. We all know the villains have certain lands, so you're either on Two Face Gang or you're a Penguin Gang. Yeah, exactly. So I'd like to see maybe he saves Catwoman. Catwoman yeah. says, "Oh yeah, thank you again," and then she disappears. So yet yeah, again, now we're instantly, bush. You know they have history. Yeah. You know they've got together before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have a very, very um, sort of dark question to ask you now. And we're in the realms of Gotham and mm -hmm. Batman. Yeah. For creating the perfect Batman, there are two villains that yeah. can't be, uh, I would argue, that's causing problems, in my personal opinion. Yep. On one hand, you have your general fans. These are the people who complained about Heath Ledger playing the Joker, Ben Affleck playing Batman, Ben Affleck uh, trying to get Ben Affleck to direct the Batman. Yeah. 
Um, and then just harassing like the fans about questions about that. And then when it's dropped, complained about the dropping Ben Affleck as director. Yeah. And now all this. And it's the ideas of people who complained about the Joker. Go, it's not exactly like the way I personally pictured my own way of doing the comics. Also, we have the big elite of Warner Brothers, which I could argue is also causing a lot of problems with the ideal trying to create a movie for a date than actually creating movies. Like for uh, 2018, the holiday period or the summer for our blockbusters, we will get the Batman movie out. Yeah. Instead of trying to focus on giving it time, like, okay, if you need three months to finish an edit, take your time. Mm. But no, for example, for Suicide Squad, uh, it was released in August, and in July, during like C- Comic-Con, they were doing reshoots, and they said there was roughly six weeks to finish an editing. Yeah. For example, uh, the, the Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi, editing started a year and a half, like roughly a year ago. Yeah. And it's the, normally it takes up to a lot of directors up to a year to uh, edit, whilst David A only really had six weeks yeah. to try and do that. And I pose a question: Who do you, when uh, you're creating the perfect Batman, what do you think is more troublesome? The fans who constantly complain and try and grow, or Warner Brothers who are more interested in making money and sort of not getting the right product out? Hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> I'd like to say first of all. Fair shout to the six weeks of trying to get this out. Yes. It came out as a brilliant movie. You yeah. did an amazing job there. Yeah, exactly. I, to be honest, you had a, a deadline and you but you yeah. smashed it. Very good yeah. job there. Um, it's hard to say because everyone's a critic. Ex- <laughs> no, 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 I am a salesman. That's my gimmick. You're a salesman. Uh, sell- yeah. <laughs> you sell the movie. Yes. But yeah, everyone's a critic these days. Yeah. And I always think of it as... You, you look at a movie, you watch it, and you yeah. say it's a rubbish movie. Don't really say it's a rubbish movie. Think of, can you make that movie yourself? Exactly. <laughs> it's just like when you go into a pub with football fans and they're watching the big game, yeah. and it's a penalty, and basically there's 10,000 people in the stadium. It's like the F- FA Cup final, yeah. and they're about to take the penalty, and they miss, and everyone goes, all these middle-aged men out of shape going, oh, I could have taken that yeah. today. Yeah. And it's the idea of just, when you're in that stressful environment, when, yeah, Suicide Squad was like 100 million or stuff, when a lot of finances go, where's our product? When can we make our money back? Because yeah. at the end of the day, as much as you can love movie making, it's still business and people need to consider mm. that. But yeah. Because uh, we're making a movie, there's a lot of aspects you have to think of it. Sound people, people creating music, the yeah. uh, costumes, the designs, yeah. the art, the, the backgrounds, CD, the scenery, the CGI. There's a lot of things that go into a movie which critically making yourself go, oh, that movie was pretty bad. Yeah. You go, I think, well, you don't really can't say that because yeah. have you ever attempted it yourself? Exactly. Have you ever sat down and thought, okay, you have to create the music. Yeah. Okay, go on, off you, t- off you go. Yeah. You can't do it, so... Critics, I I never listen to critics. I never believe reviews. Except salesmen, like you do on my channel. Yeah. At the movie salesman. <laughs> <laughs> plug in, plug in. Plug, plug, plug. But yeah, you do it in a correct way. You sell people on the movie. And just try and explain. And, and like, try and explain. You don't say yeah. to them, yeah. this is a bad movie, don't go watch it. That's and a reviewist. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I try and look for current movies out, like Moonlight. Yeah. You're going to like Moonlight if you like, for example, Boyhood, Terrence Malick movies. And mm. I go, I like Boyhood, I like Terrence Malick, I'm going to like Moonlight. Yeah. Like John Wick, it's like, it's like I love action movies, I love a good action movie. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, but some people go, I'm more, to, I'm more romance, I'm more comedy or whatever, and I'm going to be able to make the film mm. that. And that's the point, because there's so many critics out there, and I'm like, what type of movie is it at the end of the day? Yeah. And I pose a question to you. In a perfect world, I would say the best critics are of people. It's like, I would trust a filmmaker's review of something. Yes. Then, like, a, like uh, and because uh, creative people can judge over creative people because you put yourself out there. And, and that's why a lot of filmmakers are go, hey, I would do it this way. They're never like, oh, this is shit, this is pretentious. Yeah. Because they've been in that scenario before. And that's why I would assume the same with, like, electricians, like, 
let people complain and go, oh, why can't we do this? And it's like, I think in your own trade, you can be judged in that way. Mm. But at the end of the day, yeah. I was, it's, it's going back to it, where it's like, they're good at what they do, so leave them, let them do their job. Exactly. Like, can you ever imagine yeah. someone drawing a superhero on a bit of paper, and then from that bit of paper, you have to go into an actual real-life situation of yeah. an actor? It's hard. It's really, really hard to pick the best actor. Yet again, you go, well, that person's good at doing it, but how experienced of acting as he is? Well, exactly. you can say, oh, yeah, uh, wrestlers, but yeah. you have to go for wrestlers who have... A bit of acting experience. That, yeah, acting experience. Yeah. Instead of being chucked in and expect them to do it brilliant, you know? Exactly. So, yeah. I really liked Ban Affleck's version and I liked the way he looked. It was good and they did a really good design on voicing, yeah. on the way he moves, the way he fights, everything yeah. about it. I liked about it. Yeah. So, what critics getting on someone's chest and critics like penalising people, I think yeah. he shouldn't have listened. I thought he should have continued it. I thought yeah. he would have done a brilliant job. But to job. be honest, if because uh, what the rumor is that he was a bit unsure about it because he's mm. like, I'm gonna direct two years of it, and mm. then and then apparently it was leaked that he was doing it. He went, okay, I think I could do it. But then when he was promoting Live by Night, his most recent like gangster movie, yeah, everyone was going, hey, what about Batman? What yeah. about Batman? What every day it's like, oh, I'm gonna pick up my kids from school. Oh, what about Batman? Yeah. Well, but and to be honest, I can understand it, but and it's the idea of if I have a piece of paper for you, draw happiness. I go to the next person to the left, draw happiness. Your picture of what happiness is can be a completely different. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like when we read these comics and we get this idea of like, okay, this is my Batman, like the detective, my version of Superman. The hopeful one, mm. the idea of trying to learn how to be human, and then someone else can have its own interpretation <laughs> of it all. Yeah, because I mean, someone can say, from uh, my version of Batman is the New 52. My mm -hmm. version of Batman is the back in 1950s. Yeah. My version of Batman is when you had uh, George Clooney. George that, Clooney. That knows. Yeah. Or you had, uh, hey Robin, let's uh, go for uh, see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, Adam West Batman. Adam West Batman. So. There's people's Batman, yeah. so there's so many personalities for certain characters. Yeah, again, going back to Joker, yeah. there's so many personalities for one character. Yeah. So I, I'm i sad about the outcome, and I think yeah. going back onto the Warner Brothers topic yeah. now, giving people a timeline on something that they want to perfect is hard. Exactly. Being ourselves uh, YouTubers, yeah. which from a YouTube point of view, yeah. it is hard to Dude. create content. Exactly. And get out on a certain timeline, because then we're rushing around and maybe exactly. we'll edit sign count that we thought would be good or not good. So yeah, I think Warner Brothers did a very doing a bad job given deadlines. I think I don't know Batman movie coming out when this time. Okay, do you know anything about it? No. Is there any deadlines? No. No. Just leave it that way. Exactly. When it comes out, it will come out, and then when it's yeah. made and go. It's me now. When should we do it? Oh, we're doing about three months or something. Okay, let's do a bit more promo. Yeah, exactly. Let's do a bit more promo to get out there before it's out, you know? Exactly. In, uh, if I was me, it was like, yeah, the Batman's going to come out in 2018. I talked to director, drunk post, like drunk post, but she's like, how long do you think you're going to need on edit? I'll be done by September 1st. I'm like, okay, let's put it for like release date September 30th, just as a placeholder. Yeah. Mid August. I'm still not finding the right cut. My se I'm having structure issues between the second act and the third act. Yeah. Not a problem. I will go, we do PR, so it's going to be announced. And we're going to try and, uh, they're currently working on the team to try and produce the best content. Probably. Yeah. The nerds and the fans, like we are, I'm like, good, they're taking their time. They're taking the time to yeah. perfect it, which we like. Exactly. I like to say as well, you got some movies come out and people forget movies yes a lot of them like even at the moment there's so many movies in a cinema which you watch and forget yeah the movies you remember yeah are the ones that took their time yes exactly and took their time to do it lego yeah. batman movie not yeah. sure how much time they had with it but yeah. bloody hell that was that a sign that stick in your brain exactly and i would argue with the high days critics because it's usually basically when you finish an edit got everything done send it off this, you've watched it 10,000 times, you've nitpicked people's fingernails, yeah. and then Crick's blushed. What I have heard from like a very famous director who said this, 
you know when a film's good and when you can trust reviews in five years after it's gone. Yeah. And that's when you know, like, for example, 2010's Inception. That's considered a masterpiece now. Mm. And it's like, you just got to wait a few years and then whatever sticks out will stick out. Yeah. And, and like what you said, what the films that you're going to forget are going to forget. You just got to give yourself a little short few years mm. and that's when it matters. But then, then it comes out, it comes on DVD... <clears throat> Then you buy it and then you watch it again. Yeah. And then watching it on DVD, you think, oh, yeah, this is amazing. Like, yeah. there are certain movies for certain aspects, like Avatar. Yeah. Avatar was brilliant when yeah. it's in the cinema in 3D. Exactly. Try and rewatch it on a TV, you go, oh, it's all right. It's, it's all right. Yeah, right. It's exactly. So, and it depends on all sorts of, like, visuals, ideas. Because when I'm talking to my dad about movies, it's like, he always asks me, do I need to see this on the big screen? Mm. Do I need to see it at a cinema? Yeah. Or can I wait? Those are like the different ways we ask. Because, yeah, some movies, like, for example, I would argue the Fast and Furious stuff. It's great to see on the big screen because you just see cars going through buildings, yeah. explosions. And that. and there's sort of like artistic films like, or like Oscar stuff that's like, it's worth contributing. Like, for example, Moonlight is very original in that. It's like, yeah, it's not very cinematic. It's not like you get blown away, but sometimes it's important to support a film. And then some bits will go, yeah, I'll be okay waiting on DVD. Yeah. So, I would say when doing this movie, this uh, movie of ours, yeah. I would like to say give them as much time as you can. Yeah. Don't rush anything. Give them as much time. agree. Because the more better quantity, the quality they put into it, it's better than how fast they could get out. Exactly. Because uh, that goes back down to timing as well. What's yeah. the two movies I'm thinking of? Iron Man Animation. Yes. Uh, the pirate one. Yes. That movie was made on a big budget. Yeah. And they had to sell it in the cinemas or they couldn't do another big movie. Yeah. Came out the exact same day as Avengers or something like that. Yeah, I remember the, the, the yeah. first Avengers. So it's like the first Avengers came out on the same time that both of them were in the cinema. Yeah. This movie lost a lot of money. Because be- of that. Because yeah. of that. So timing is good as well. Exactly. It's for example now with the Star Wars releasing every movie at, uh, at December, a lot of people like the any blockbuster type things like I'm not producing my December. Either give it to me in November yeah. or January because it's usually that opening weekend is the most important. Yeah. And wait one or two weeks. It's, for example, last year with Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them yeah. came out in November. Had two weeks to earn as much money, and the the Harry Potter nerds <coughs> like myself <laughs> will watch it a few times then. Yeah. And you get some stragglers of like word of mouth, and then it gave room like in the first week of December, Rogue One came yeah. out, and everyone has the chance. So I hundred percent agree with. You. So we've talked about uh, what movie, what type of actors yeah. and stuff. So let's move on to our next subject for uh, which one we are now. Okay. I pose this then. Yep. We we were currently talking about the perfect Batman, and basically we said, give it time, mm. allow it to be simple, focus on a bit more mystery elements to create that. Uh, villains pick something that's good. Yeah. Uh, make a mystery movie instead of uh, exactly. a full out war. Is going blockbuster, on. a bit too much. Focusing. And yeah. ki- he's got history, so you can involve history factors exactly. of with Selena and Talia. Yeah. They both have history, so you don't used to go into. This is the long love yes, story. Yes, like the 20 minutes stuff. Yeah. yeah. Now, I pose a question to you. We're talking about the Batman movie. Mm-hmm. Batman is only one part of this thing called the Bat Family. Yeah. Just like the Superman family. There's the Superman movies. And now we currently have a Supergirl TV show, which I really enjoy as a super fan. Yeah. And I, so I pose a question to you. It mm-hmm. could be TV or it could be movie. If you want a spin-off from the Batman and you can't include Bruce Wayne Batman, yeah. what would you like to see? Um, well, the only thing we really have at the moment is Gotham, which uh, I think they've done a wonderful job. So a wonderful series and they're still going strong and can't wait to see more of Gotham, which yeah. is brilliant. Very good show. It shows all the beginnings of Nygma as he's working in the police force all these people Cobble come apart and all these people which is the beginning of their yeah. big story which is good so there's so many in a bat family as like many people might know four robins yeah. or more robins you got uh dick grayson you got yeah. uh jason todd you yeah. got damien and then you got uh 
Uh, Tim? Tim. Yeah. Right? Tim. I, I, I sort of know Batman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's the smart one that goes up to be uh, Red Robin. That's oh, yes. Yeah, he gets the Red Robin, yeah. Handed me the Red so, Robin. So, yeah, again, you could do about any of these. I would yeah. say Damien's a bit too fresh and it'll be a young series, which I won't really yeah. agree with. Jason goes off to be Red Hood in Out- yeah. Outlaws, which that'd be good. Imagine yeah. Red Hood going to his face with Starfire and that. Yeah. That'd be a cool series. Um, I would really recommend Nightwing. Yes. Because I don't want it to be a Robin thing, because if it's a Robin thing, I would think too much of Damien, because of time wise. Exactly. If Batman's old in the movie, yeah. it has to roughly go about, yeah, being dark, Nightwing. Yeah. Because he's in Gotham, but then he also goes back to the original circus in yeah. the Upstate comics, oh. which is. You could either call it Nightwing or Grayson. Yes. Because Grayson's in the comics at the moment because his yeah. identity got shown. So yeah, he's called Grayson, where he's more detective uh, agent yeah. style. Oh, that's cool. He's more of an agent, which he's just himself. Yes. He isn't dressed up as Nightwing. Oh, okay, that's very So it shows his factor of, even though he's known as Nightwing, which he flies around, he jumps around and yeah. uses... Nightwing uh, flies? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he uses all these items and stuff. Yeah. As well as even as him as a human, he's an agent which yeah. uses all these uh, acrobatic skills because of yeah. the circus and that to still yeah. do a great job. So you can have the factor of day and night yeah. in this TV series of yeah. him as an agent in a day, and then if he needs to, he can turn into Nightwing to do more input missions. Talking about Nightwing, uh, with the current CW show Arrow, mm-hmm. throughout the few se- uh, first uh, the five season, there's always been a reference to a certain town. Called Bloodhaven. It's like yeah. Diggles just went past Bloodhaven. He's currently at a conference in Bloodhaven. There's so many references to Bloodhaven, and there's a rumor that that now that Supergirl's doing successful the show, we've got the Green Arrow, we've got Legends that deals with a lot of other stuff like and Flash for the Metahumans. We need someone on the Batman family for the TV show. Yeah. And this might be what you're saying about CW doing a uh, Nightwing series. That would be brilliant. I would 100% can't yeah. wait to see something like that. Yeah. I like to involve the like I said, agent side of him, yeah. Grace and agent side, yeah. as well as his Nightwing. Yeah. Because a lot of superhero things yeah. you do get oh, it's only at night you can do stuff uh, yeah. whilst in days busy, but it's good to see it. Um yeah. out of Batman family we got Batgirl, Batwoman. Yeah. Batwoman would be cool to see as that's, series. That's my choice. What I would like to see is a Batwoman series, um, bit like with Justice League Dark, and just a bit more of the thing of a, with a slight tinge of the supernatural. A yeah. bit like with what Tom Hardy's Taboo is about, uh, which is basically him in Victorian times trying to uh, uh, fight against the UK um, and the US. Yeah. And it's the idea, and there's supernatural elements, but they don't explain it, and there's a little tinge to it. And what I would love is the idea, even though Ben Affleck's very busy, even if you just use his head, like the idea of, because again, I would like it to start off with Batwoman is Batwoman, mm. and like maybe during a flashback, you see some him talking to a, a hooded figure, yeah, and like maybe have that costume type built, so there's an impression that, just like in the comics, that Batman has spoken to Batwoman, and Batwoman's like, I'm going to do my own thing, and yeah. do all that. Oh, yes, uh, The Adventures of Kate King. Yeah, because um, if you read the Batwoman comics, it involves her. She went into the military, but yeah. they don't approve of um, same sex because yes. she's a lesbian. Don't ask, don't tell, that sort yeah, of thing. she's a lesbian, so she yeah. left the army. So she's got military yeah. background. Her father is a big military guy. Yeah. Um, and she involves a lot of the mystics and yeah. a lot of uh, werewolves and mystic creatures, yeah. which is good. Which like the tinge of the supernatural. The uh, supernatural. Yeah. So as well as she fights um, guys, she fights mystics as well, which is yeah. good. Which involves vampires as well as other things like that, which is good. Yeah, yeah. I 100% agree. That would be a good series. I would like to see that. Yeah. yeah that's but a quick shout to all the other type of people. Um Got Huntress, which that be cool. Oh, yes, which has been, they've currently been doing, or did in the first two seasons of Arrow, which was very, very good to see the Huntress, mm. which I was very happy to see. Um, this is the idea. There was a rumour that um, with the Arrow's uh, Roy, uh, uh, sort of, uh, the Green Arrow sidekick, after he's left, 
um, there was a rumor that he was about to start the sort of version of the Teen Titans, and they were going to have a Batman, uh, like a Robin of sorts. Yeah. And then have that idea, which I thought could be quite fun to have, like sort of a. Yeah, CW shows are like sort of adult, maybe going through this like teenager feel, like the uh, the original uh, Teen Titans cartoon. <laughs> go away, Teen Titans, go. <laughs> yeah, because there was a few um, people which can correspond with the Nightwing thing, and one character I'm trying to think of is um, in the newer series. Yep. Uh, Bluebird. Bluebird, yes. Because she's a pretty cool person, Bluebird, which is a new sidekick which is involved with... Oh, shit. She's yeah, cool. She is cool. So Bluebird is a new character that's in the Upstate New 52, which uh, also Batman Eternal she's involved with. And she has a, she's really teched out. She looks really cool. And she's... You can say... I can imagine her and uh, Blue... Her and Nightwing in a yeah. series. Well, that could be kind of fun. That would be good. I, I would like to see that. The sort of... Uh, I, I mean this in the... Like it's sort of the B list of that family. You got mm. the Bat Family Eternal, and then you got the surrounding characters around that. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well. So yeah, we get in the shape of a movie that we think would be the best. Yeah. Batman movie ever. And again, yes, it's just give it time. If there is uh, villains and romantic interests, have reference to previous past, so all the comic book fans can just cry and go, "Oh my God, it's a reference to blah 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 yeah. blah." blah. Um, but yeah, and give whoever's directing it time, and yes, and the mystery aspect, and just focusing on Batman being the world's finest detective. Yeah, it is really good, and it's just such a nice thing to um, such a nice thing to see. And yeah. with the Lego Batman movie, exactly. you've got so many references in there, and yeah. everyone's losing it because they which uh, which the people listen now. We have made a spoiler discussion thing. Of, of, of a video on the other nerd's channel, which I will link down in the, <laughs> yeah. in the progressive show. So, um, if you want to look more into uh, the Lego Batman, we did do a, a leaky discussion where we sat down together and chatted about the Lego Batman movie after watching it, which was good. But yeah, so I just want to say a personal thank you to you guys for helping me with my Batman knowledge, even though <laughs> it's kind of shallow, even though I made a huge mistake mixing up. Two Face and Harvey Bullock. Gordon. <laughs> 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 Gordon, but yes, uh, I just want to say thank you for uh, listening. Yeah, uh, it, it helps us out when you give us a like and subscribe. Comment down below. What do you want from a Batman movie? Mm -hmm. What characters? What, how would you like it to be shot, made? Who would you like to make it? Let us know. Anyway, you can follow me on Twitter at the Movie Salesman. <laughs> <laughs> and you can follow me as just a Curtis. I have my own YouTube channel, which um, I do vlogging and stuff, as well as the uh, Twitter and all that other things you can find me on. But exactly. yeah. So yeah, and just remember one thing: <laughs> stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.